We're Alan and Saj, and we live full-time in our converted van, Apollo. After staying in one place for three months due to a coronavirus lockdown, we are finally free to travel. We are currently exploring the best of the UK and can't wait for international travel to start again. This week on Running Off Grid. Welcome back everyone to part 2 of our NC500 video series. We've been wild camping our way around the north coast of Scotland in our converted van Apollo. Last week we were heading up the west coast via the notorious Applecross Path. We found the most amazing beach and finished up at Ullapool. This morning we are castle hunting. Beach going on here. Oh, there's a uh, there's a beach there, sweetheart. Have you bought your rash vest? Can't be done, I'm afraid. You're not allowed to swim within 50 meters of a castle in right. Scotland. Is that true? That's the law. Even if you had your rash vest. Eat with that. Well, yeah, makes no odds. Can't be done. Shame. Can't be done. Ardbreck Castle stands at the south end of Loch Assint. The tower dates from the 15th century and was the seat of the MacLeods of Assint. The circular corbelled section, which I'm assuming is this bit, enclosed the staircase while the vaulted basement held the kitchen, storerooms and dungeons. So he kidnapped and imprisoned his wife and the Marquis of Montrose after some battle. Different times though. Different yeah. times. Montrose was lashed backwards to his horse and taken to Edinburgh where he was found guilty of treason for being executed in the grass market where he made the most eloquent speech. Mm. I love this guy book. He's got little little things about that which you would never he hear got the of. Speech. No. Do you want to hear about the last inhabitants of yep. this place? Yeah. The last inhabitants were a pair of ospreys in the 19th century. A pair of ospreys? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. That's what the book says. Well, it must be true. Then. It must be true. I love that. Love a car for me. Oh, good. Yeah. Crack on. Crack on. NC500. If you've liked this video, give us a little comment, a little subscribe, maybe a thumbs up. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
just had a great run about. Ooh, now it's a race against time to get the shower done before I get too cold. morning everyone we did a good old drive yesterday i was quite surprised we came from all the way down there all the way up to just below Durness, which we're going to go and do today um, and then go to the smoo caves it says <laughs> i love reading from the guidebook Durness is the most remote and least populated parish in the uk with only 2.4 people per square mile hmm. all right are we ready? Tally ho. Tally bally ho. fun thing about road tripping isn't it you can just say turn around let's park here go look at something cool i think even if you had your rash vest i'd say don't go in there <laughs> yes it's not for me no Somewhere called a chocolate mountain. Chocolate mountain. Cafe. The actual chocolate, yeah. I don't know. It's just a brown mountain. I'll be really disappointed. Well, to be fair, if it's actually made of chocolate, that would be cool. Cocoa mountain. Cocoa mountain. The craft village. Oh, we did. Have been saying, haven't we, that we should definitely stop at one of these. Mountain Art Gallery. Hot chocolate was a bit pricey, so I'm going to carry on. Four pounds, four pounds fifty for a hot chocolate. For a hot chocolate. We're at the Smoo Caves now, and Alan's having a conversation with the laundry man. There's a laundry there, and a man. Yeah, I think we should give the old laundry a little whirl while we're here. Yeah, why not? We can wash our clothes while we're in the caves. How much is that then? I think it was about 18 quid. Okay, well that's not bad. Wash and dried. Yeah. It's like probably three to four normal loads. Nice. So, it's all right. Basically everything we own. Yeah. 
Now we got to see the caves while it's being done. Yeah, exactly. Winning. is called Loch Erebel. A lot of World War II activity there and apparently the service man used to call it Loch Orrible because of the lack of on, on shore facilities. Whenever we stop somewhere, I always do two things. I put a little bit of water in a bowl, see where it lands, no, where it flows to see what the camber's like. But it looks fine. And then I just do a little internet speed test and you can't see because it's too sunny, but yeah, 9.6, so it's fine. And also it's really pretty, so we are all good. So nice. We're stopping quite early today, both a bit tired from driving for like three days straight, but yeah, it's a lovely place. Go and see what Alan thinks about it. What do you think, babe? I think it's nice. Yeah. Just do a bit of laundry. to the left. Yes, I was right. Two quid. Per vehicle per day. That's very fair, isn't it? And it said all oh, can stay. Oh, that's nice. Let's go next to this, mate. Let's go next to this. Looks like a Citroen relay. Peugeot Boxer. Peugeot Boxer. All the same now, aren't they? A bit windy at John O'Groats today. Tell us about John O'Groats. Would you like to hear the origin of the name? Yeah, I would. Okay. Jan de Groot, a Dutchman, had his house here in the reign of James IV, 1488 to 1513. His seven sons disagreed about president, so he built an octagonal house with eight doors and an eight sided table so that no one had the head of the table. He ran a ferry to Orkney and charged two day a trip. This coin became known as the Groat. He is buried in Canisby Churchyard, where his tombstone stands in the porch. Locally, he, be named, he became known as John O'Groats, and the area took on his nickname. Ooh. And what is John O'Groats, though? It's the most northerly... Point of the mainland of the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get a photo by the sign. Of course. Pointy sign. Yeah. Well then. Let's go. Land, like they've got their own little city civilization there. It's all going on. Stuff's going down. It is. That's cool. Gilmots or Gillimots? Gilmots, Gillimots. Birds. Birds. Are they real though? Black ones. Are they real though? Birds aren't real. No. Government surveillance drones, mate. <laughs> Cameras for eyes. Yeah. The 
looks a bit like the Lion King world from here. Kuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem-free philosophy. Another cracking day on the NC500. Just keeps on giving, absolutely love it. So beautiful. We're just gonna bed down in a little park for night special tonight and tomorrow, Saj has got another castle for us. See you in the morning. We've had a run, we've had some brekkie, weather's looking good. So we're off to check out a really big castle today, just north of Inverness at the moment. Uh, it looks really good on the guidebook. We've got a taxidermy museum which is uh, <laughs> something Alan's really interested in. So yeah, that'd be good. Another day, another castle. For a castle, though, that beats the sort of some small ruins, doesn't it? Oh. Amazing. I, don't know. I like the ruins. I like the ruins. What? Can I get one of those rugs for the van? Uh. <laughs> oh my god. looks amazing and uh, really impressive but I'm never quite sure how I feel about taxidermy and things. I mean it was of its time. It was of its time. It's the original layout in the Victorian times which is pretty cool. Oh, the quick question is now, do you want venison burger? I do now, yeah. yeah? Okay. Venison's dear isn't it? Oh. Okay. Venison, dear, isn't it? Right, that's it. We've just driven past Inverness. We were going to stop at the castle and try and show you guys the start and the end of the NC500 but the traffic was absolutely mad and there was nowhere to stop so we gave up on that idea but oh what a journey honestly the NC500 is incredible isn't it? Yeah it's so good I'm really sad that it's ended yeah it was amazing so beautiful so much scenery those rugged mountains the crazy windy roads yeah uh, it's just been amazing yeah, I love just all the 
seaside bits and the mountain bits and all the animals we saw and the walks we went on. It's just been one amazing thing after the other. Castles, gorges, museums, really nice food. Really easy to park as well. Oh, so many spots for wild camping and lovely little campsites. Not that we stopped at any, but yeah, just amazing. 100% recommend it. If you're thinking about doing it and you think, should I, shouldn't I, do it. Oh yeah, if you're, if you're a van lifer, you've got to do the NC500. You've got to do it. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you get a moment, give us a thumbs up. It really helps with that YouTube algorithm. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're not subscribed, consider clicking that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, every Sunday, three o'clock. We'll see you again soon. See you then soon. Hey! Thank you.